Okay, let's see here. Wrath Classic DPS Min Maxing is somehow just as degen as Vanilla Classic was. Parsing Andes. Oh, good. Just what my, my, my favorite thing. Let's take a look at it. Here we go. When it came to min-maxing, vanilla was truly in a league of its own. Yes, World it buffs that could increase the power of your character easily by over 30%, random level 20 or 30 something items which were bis forever, and stacking so many consumables you could hit the buff cap. And I thought, after all that, the following expansions would have a lot less opportunity for- I think the main reason why the vanilla min-maxing was so fucking ridiculous is how easy the raids were on their own these kind of interactions. And whilst TBC had one or two, it wasn't anything too noticeable. Wrath, though, much to my surprise, has already had more new or unique class and spec interactions than we saw throughout the whole duration of TBC. Here I was expecting us to have the most solved version of World of Warcraft ever, what with it being so famous among fan server players, but no, even to this day, new techniques are still being discovered. So today, I'm going to talk you through some of the ways players are still finding opportunities to min-max their characters in this old game. All right, let's hear I want it. to start off by having a bit of fun here. So if you watch a lot of WoW stuff, you'll probably know the answer to this, but it goes to show how plausible almost anything can be in this game. Okay. I'm going to go over two separate player discoveries to boost DPS. One of them is totally real and was hotfixed out of the game some 24 hours after becoming public knowledge, and the other one is a made-up meme on Reddit. See if you get the right one. First, we have the fire warrior so in wrath one of the changes to stats is there's no longer a spell crit and melee crit there's just a general crit stat this means classes such as warriors rogues and hunters who would usually not gain any benefit from spells critting because they didn't have any spell crit now passively do so how is this going to be of use to a warrior well the another gloves. pretty huge change which is really easy to overlook was made to the talent deep wounds this adds a bleed effect after you crit now back in classic and tbc this bleed was based off the amount that your critical strike dealt. In Wrath now, it's based off your average weapon damage, and more importantly, adding crits doesn't just refresh the debuff, it refreshes it and stacks, so you really want to be critting as much as you possibly can. And it was found that Deep Wounds wasn't just proccing off physical effects, but also spells. This suddenly gives warriors an incentive to equip items that have a chance to inflict spell crits to keep the Deep Wounds stacking up. Here is where the Fire Warrior is born. Oh your best enchant went from from berserking to now being fiery weapon instead like you were some level 19 in a battleground well there was also the it's yeah it's top the gloves of that, level 53 there you pair go. of gloves were dug up called fiery plate mm -hmm. gauntlets which added plus four fire damage to your weapon which is just another chance to proc deep wounds exactly more of these gauntlets were probably made in a few days than ever have been in classic before so that yep. was option one does that sound like i've just made that up or was it real that well happened. here's the second discovery that was made it's called clam weaving and if you played a death uh, both of them are real okay very clever Right, you had to be doing it. Discover during the Wrath of the Lich King pre-patch, this new technique boosted DK DPS so far above everyone else that something had to be done about it. So, what was the deal here? Well, it turned out using a rather strange interaction between opening a container and a bug talent let you bypass the ability global cooldown, meaning every other attack could be two abilities at the same time. Wow. All you had to do is respec into Unholy and get the improved Unholy Presence talent, and to then make sure you swap back into Unholy presence. After doing this, you needed an item which was considered a container, and the easiest at the time and most readily available to farm were clams. There were hundreds on the auction house which had close to no value, and you could go grind low-level murlocs fast as well, making this a really good choice. And it was that simple. Man, people are pretty stupid with this game, man. They are pretty fucking stupid with this game, yeah. It's like, and this is all, by the way, keep in mind, this is all to clear Nax Ramus. Okay. With the bug talent activated, after using an ability, you open a clam and your GCD would reset, allowing you to instantly fire off a second ability. It goes without saying that this was a significant DPS increase yeah. and led to DKs being even more degenerate than they already are. True. Okay, those are the two techniques. Which one is real? Which one is fake? They're both well, real. as much as I love the name, I hate to say it, but clam weaving was never real. It was some prime bait which got the classic min maxers testing this theory for hours after it was released though it has led to the word weaving being used in really i never looked into it i just thought it was real did i get baited by fake news 
Yeah, I just assumed that shit was real. Cause like every yeah. Yeah, I, I thought yeah, I thought that shit was because everybody was talking about it for like a, a week. I was like, well, this sounds stupid. Holy fuck. Whoever made this is a genius then. Pretty much every scenario that involves min maxing nowadays. The fire warrior though was completely real. Warriors yeah. were actually using fiery weapon and equipping some sketchy looking classic gloves to boost their deep wounds damage. Of and course. Blizzard didn't like that one bit, nerfing the interaction literally within 24 hours after it went public. It just goes to show. Which is a good thing. Uh, nerfing something stupid like that is absolutely positive. It's an old game, but new things are always being uncovered. Now, a classic min-maxing vid I did not so long ago had a pretty lengthy bit on feral druids and all the weird interactions oh, yeah. they had in classic and TBC. We'll watch that and I one thought eventually. with the wrath changes, that would be it for ferals doing strange stuff. And I thought wrong. As it turns out, feral- Well, I mean, anybody that plays a feral druid does strange stuff. Let's be honest enjoyers have found arguably even more ways to min-max this particular class mm -hmm. and spec in Wrath than ever before. We need to start with bear weaving. Yes, be prepared to see the word weaving a lot. After clan weaving, it was Blast just too rate, memeable. Right? So, bear weaving, what is it? What's the benefit? Well, I one of the changes made to druids from TBC to Wrath was on energy. Now it goes up gradually instead of yeah. by 20 every two seconds. The Fiora talent was also changed so you retain energy upon entering cap instead of gaining it. In other words, your energy bar is always going up whether or not you are in cat form and you can huh. shift into cat and use it whenever you want the idea behind bear weaving is that you either a have spent all your energy in cat or b have a period of downtime in your rotation where you are just auto attacking during this time you can shift into bear start stacking lacerate mauling and just generally pressing some buttons then you can go back into cat when you need to refresh buffs or debuffs and repeat oh, and yes fuck. it is actually a decent dp gain. Looking at some of the top barrel drill logs, efficient bear weaving during a full tier 7 clear added up to some 10% of the total. Jesus fucking Christ. Like, th Jesus, like, I, it's just nuts, man. I do this shit for 100 more DPS. That's crazy. Wow. Damage. If you could gain 10% more damage on your main, you probably would too, right? Now, if you're already- No, not if I had to press extra buttons. Yeah, if I didn't have to press extra buttons, I'd just be hitting the, the normal button. I'd be fine. Bear weaving, of course, you also should be snake weaving. Goes without saying, what? really. May as well go all the way with min maxing. It turns out when you summon a companion pet, it resets your swing timer. So when you enter bear form and your swing timer changes, you can force reset it for an instant attack, allowing you to maul earlier. Small optimization, but a relevant one. Apparently, this also works through weapon swapping to a fast dagger or even drinking a noggin fogger elixir. But snake weaving sounds more memeable, so oh, I guess God. that's why we've gone with that and if we're bear, we're well, bear if people want to do this they should be able to do this if it matters to you that much to do a little bit more damage by pulling out the snake every once in a while let them fucking do it weaving and snake weaving we should of course be idle weaving as well did you know that you can swap idols during combat well yeah, now you do weapon. and optimally Swapped. you want this idol for when you apply a new rip and then swapping back to this one for shredding and combo point Holy generation fuck. but all of that is for single target encounters wow. we need to make the most of things on aoe too is there anything that we can do here yes yes there is and it is called flower shifting so another change made to talents during wrath was to omen of clarity becoming a passive effect that has a chance to make your next spell free. On top of this, feral cats now gain a swiper level 75, allowing them to be relevant on AoE. And wow. though swipe is spammable, it costs a lot of energy, which is a bit of a problem. But it yeah. turns out that AoE spells still have a chance to proc Omen of Clarity, albeit at a reduced rate. But after you spend all your energy on swipe, you want to go out of cat form and start spamming Gift of the Wild to force proc Omen of Clarity, and then go back into cats and get that free swipe off. And it's just really that easy. Feral Druids are just doing Feral Druid stuff for the third expansion in a row. Okay, we need to move on from- Holy fuck, man. Like, back whenever I used to parse, uh, back in the good days, you know how you got a good parse? 
you uh, told the you told the group, hey, don't AOE them ads. I'm, I want I want to get a lot of big numbers on this one. Or like maybe a few people die at the end, and you're playing a warrior, so you get a longer execute phase, or you know you just get a lucky pull, or you pull the boss early, or you attack when you're not supposed to. Oh my God, taunted general. Yeah, you attack general Nazgrim in the in the the shield phase, defensive stance phase. Yeah. Holy fuck, man. Druids, though, I've got a few more points to cover. Let's start with Helm Slurping. Yes, this fantastic what? name is what the community decided to agree on for this. Bit of an update, it got nerfed within 24 hours of becoming widespread knowledge. In fact, Good. I was so sure it was going to get nerfed after I first saw it, I went and got footage of it as soon as possible so I can show you in real time exactly how it worked. But just for the fun of what was possible, let's go over exactly how the interaction happened. So, Beaming Earth Siege Diamond is a meta gem that gives you plus two percent bonus mana okay. not a huge deal just seems okay sure but it wasn't just giving two percent bonus mana each time you equipped a new helm with this meta gem on or just activated it it instantly restored two percent of your maximum mana and it was spammable. You can get two helms with this in and spam a macro to swap between the two helms and never have to stop and drink in raids between trash packs ever again. It's actually very powerful on speedruns. You can That's really good. Yeah, that's actually really, really good. Wow. You can go from 0 to 100% mana whilst moving in a little over 10 seconds. Just remember to swap back to your actual helm with a proper meta gem before boss mm -hmm. fights. Because of course you can't swap helms in combat, of but course. you can swap weapons, and weapons have gem sockets which gives us two options to optimize our helm slurping. Number one is replacing the meta gem in your helm during combat, which is something you can do, bizarrely enough. Doing this is literally infinite mana, but you're going to also need infinite gold to go with it, because each meta gem you put in is going to destroy the old one. The other way, depending on your class of course, is to swap in a weapon or a wand that has a gem in that will activate the meta gem. So as you can see here on Beaming Earth Siege Diamond, it needs two reds and one orange to work. So if you have two reds normally and and zero oranges and then find a wand or a weapon with a gem socket and swap between that weapon and a different one it will activate the meta gem every single time you do on priests for example this meant they had a pretty straightforward way to ensure that they literally never go oom of course oh fuck oh fuck man oh my god this is just like, this is straight up 200 IQ. Yes. This is what people do that have played the same game for 15 years. People get crazy with it. Yes, they do. This is getting to the point where we were talking about like, uh, fucking like how people were trying to save time on Super Mario Brothers speed runs to go under the five minute benchmark. Like, they, 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 like, we're getting to that point of ridiculousness. Of course, this is a lot cheaper than swapping your meta gem repeatedly during combat, but yeah, not every single class can do this. But as mentioned, as you can probably see why now, it was nerfed pretty fast. Now to end off, I've got a few random class optimizations okay. which don't really fit too cleanly into one single category. Rogues are the best AoE class in the game it turns out, and the more trash that is pulled, the harder this they is, scale. Uh, off, yeah. I've seen rogues with certain combinations of weapons peak just over 40,000 DPS That's when pulling number. most of the trash together at the start of the spider wing. How are they doing it then? Well. Rogue's new spell, Fan of Knives, gains a bonus when using daggers compared to regular weapons. Mm -hmm. This was done so Fan is about equal between assassination and combat builds. Right. Also, Instant Poison has changed to be a proc per minute effect, which means it's going to scale less or more depending on how fast your weapon is. So a fast weapon will have a lower chance to proc and a slower one will have a higher chance. Titan Steel Spellblade is in a strange spot of being a 2.5 weapon and speed dagger. This speed is unique and gives it much better odds at proc per minute effects. So a rogue spamming fan with this on is A gaining the bonus damage from using fan with a dagger on on top of the higher chance to proc instant poisons when they do. Which in of itself is a pretty good interaction but we can take this a lot further. Rod of the Sun King that drops from Kael'thas in Tempest Keep gives melee attacks a chance to restore 5 energy. Fan of Knives is of course a melee attack. I couldn't find any accurate data on the proc 
chance unfortunately, but hit enough mobs and you're going to be getting back a lot of energy. The alternative and the better option is Fell Striker from Rend Black Hand in Upper Black Rock Spire. This is the big item that you want to go and f AKA Fox Slayer has this one. We have we have these dipshits in our own guild. Yeah, this is still yeah, th as far as I know this is still in the game. The, the big item, yes, this is min max, absolutely farm it will near insta proc on a large pack and it will guarantee that all your attacks Everything crit. Crits. rogues also in the assassination tree have a talent called focused attacks that refunds energy when they crit uh -huh. so rogues are able to crit every single attack and keep full energy meaning they can spam fan of knives non-stop no class in the game comes even close to what a fell striker rogue can do on aoe so yeah if you're a rogue main go farm your spell damage dagger and your level 60 dagger for your bis on aoe in fact it's not just rogues using titan steel spellblade either enhancement shamans are playing a spell hands build that leans way more into dealing fire damage instead of using wind fury now there is a better main hand option in nax ramus but a slower weapon is desirable as flame tongues weapon damage scales with your weapon speed this variation doesn't really change up anything too dramatically it's just that at least for the time being it's beating out more traditional wind fury damage on the meters and in case you're worried that these strange interactions might get nerfed we've seen what happened with helm slurping and with the fire warrior blizzard knows when players are using some creative game mechanics and they've decided to leave it in at least for the time being Final yeah i don't think it's that bad really uh the only time it's bad is whenever one item becomes bis for the whole expansion and the item is from like uh vanilla wow or something that's whenever it's bad mention has to go to unholy death knights in wrath it turns out that all your cooldowns resetting that, each boss and with proper snapshotting on gargoyle has led to some rather unbelievably good results snapshotting DPS. being in short waiting until you have as many beneficial effects active as possible before you use an ability and then that ability will retain those effects for its full duration right. as of today the top and holy death knight passes in the world on patchwork are starting to go over the 10k holy mark already shit. And they aren't doing anything specifically to game breaking. It's just the summon gargoyle is getting so many different haste effects, they're doing unreal amounts of damage. Here's one of the top logs in the world where uh -huh. an unholy DK's gargoyle contributed the most towards their overall damage on patchwork, getting off 63 casts within its 30 second duration. I'm not sure there's another ability in the game with the push of one button that can contribute over 200,000 damage in one cast. Haste what the effects fuck? such as bloodlust, troll racial berserking, deep potion meteorite whetstone from utgar pinnacle engineering gloves black magic and the haste prop from a meta gem during the opener are leading to some pretty unreal results oh and these dks are dual wielding and aren't even taking scourge strike in the talent tree either it's completely different from what unholy was originally and as gear improves and fights get shorter and holy is going to get yeah it'll, even it, it'll do even more damage because the you know the gargoyle only lasts for a minute so the closer to a minute the fight is the more damage they're gonna do, because that's their main damage window. Oh my fucking god. The DK in my guild swaps from blood to unholy just before bosses to unholy frenzy himself. Bro, we just pull the boss. Yeah, I I just I just pull the boss like we just get a we get him get him done. Yeah, it's about I mean it's not that bad further ahead from where they are at the moment. Anyways, who would have thought Wrath would see this many new discoveries? There may still be more out there that's yet to be discovered, so watch this space because yeah, researching and putting now. together videos on this stuff is really fun and interesting, and you guys seem These to like it too. If there's anything else big that you think I missed, do drop it down below. And as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one very soon. This was a very, very good video. I, I did not expect it to be this good. This was such a good fucking video. This is a Willy video. Make sure to give it a like and give him a sub if you guys play WoW and like WoW content. He's a good spoo parses. I don't even know, like... I feel like, what are what are my WoW parses? Warcraft, logs... Okay, let me see here. Yeah, what are my... What are my parses? Classic WoW... Asmon Fresh... Sky Fury... That's pretty good. Yeah, that's that's all right. There we go. 
Yeah, I think I'm doing pretty fine. Pretty much fine. Yeah, there we go. Uh, have you seen... Yeah, what is Top G versus Jake Paul? No, I have not seen that. Is that actually happening? I have no idea. But, like, yeah, my parses are fine. Like, we usually kill the bosses, and, and that's it. That Lothab? What happened with Lothab? Oh, I think I died or something. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, 